Chapter 57, Home, Smoke, and Liars Marco was anxious and it was clear to see. Since the moment the brothers had left Marco had felt the winds of change blowing through and frankly, they were rather cold. Something had been nagging him in the back of his mind that things were about to change. Lighten up buddy. Thatch said throwing an arm around Marco's shoulders but Marco couldn't something was weird. They'll be fine, have faith in them and in Garp. Vista said to Marco as well but once again Marco couldn't shake the feeling that something was changing. That was when they first left a month and a half ago now Marco knew his suspicions on change were correct. He said he has a new family now yo it. Marco said to Thatch when no one was near. Sometimes he felt more secure just talking with the chef. He's 14 Marco, don't you remember what you were like at 14? Thatch asked him and he shook his head. No, not really, that was a very long time ago yo it. Thatch didn't miss the sadness on Marco's face or in his voice at all. Well I do. And let me tell you I was the worst little shit you'd ever meet. Thatch said and Marco smiled. I don't doubt it you it. Marco laughed quietly and Thatch tried to hide his smile with feigned anger. And what's that supposed to mean? He asked showing shock but Marco saw the grin and couldn't stop himself from grinning back. He's also making friends Marco and that's a good thing last time I checked. Thatch reminded him. I knew he could, Luffy can make friends of anyone if he wanted to. He was just too young to know how yo it. Marco remembered the sadness Luffy had over not having friends and it still broke his heart. One of them is a girl. Thatch smiled and Marco rolled his eyes. Luffy's never been interested in girls yo it. Marco said as if pointing out the obvious and Thatch just laughed. He's 14 Marco, he may not have been interested before but he might be now. He said and Marco paled at the thought. I'm not ready for this conversation Thatch yo it. Marco said putting his face in his hands trying to keep calm. Maybe that can be a conversation for Pops. Thatch said not really wanting to have that conversation with Luffy either or really any of the brothers. If we ever need to have it yo it. Marco said and Thatch laughed. He may be young but he is still a man Marco he'll need it, and Ace is apparently interested in girls now as well from what we've learned. Marco tried to drown Thatch out at this point in time. We'll deal with that when the time comes yo it. He said and Thatch laughed loudly. Sounds like a plan, brother. Thatch missed the brats like crazy even if he wasn't as down as Marco. The ship was loud as ever but it felt almost empty. Luffy's presence had been a major part of the ship for many years and to feel it gone now was saddening. He missed Ace's quirks and protectiveness as well as Sabo's intelligence and quick thinking. It's quite here yo it. Marco said listening to the waves as stars started to appear in the sky. I'm almost bored half the time without my pranking masters. Thatch agreed in his own way. I just want them home yo it. Marco whispered. We all do, only two more weeks and we'll have them back home safe. Thatch knew Marco would become even more protective of the boys but he wouldn't stop it. After all, their time with Luffy was running out if the kid planned to leave at 17. Am I selfish to want them home now yo it? Marco asked and Thatch leaned back from where he was sitting beside Marco and looked up at the sky as more stars had appeared. We're pirates. We're allowed to be selfish Marco. Then I want them home now yo it. Was all that needed to be said. Night was upon them and somewhere in the east blue they knew their brothers were hopefully sleeping safe. Sanji had to get up early to help the chefs get breakfast ready and the restaurant opened for regular customers so Luffy got up with him. Luffy was used to getting up rather early since he liked to be there when Thatch started breakfast so this was nothing new to him. You know you can always sleep in a bit more. Sanji said since the alarm clock did say it was just past 5.30 a.m. though Luffy just shook his head in defiance. And miss out on the freshest breakfast possible? Never. He said and Sanji couldn't help the small smile as he lit up a cigarette and inhaled a deep breath before letting the smoke out. Whatever works for you, I guess. He said and Luffy cheered at the thought of Sanji's amazing food. 
Luffy followed Sanji down to the kitchens and watched them all get ready for work. Luffy liked watching them they all had this way of knowing where they all were while working. Whether that is from observation hacky or just being with one another for so long Luffy didn't know. Sanji had told him that many of the chefs in this restaurant had once been pirates so he wondered if they knew his pops at all. You sure you don't want to go back to bed? Sanji called over to Luffy who was daydreaming at one of the baking tables. Nope this feels like home. He said and Sanji raised one of his finely curled brows up in confusion. I used to watch my brother cook breakfast in the mornings. He said simply shrugging his shoulders and Sanji smiled as well as a few of the other chefs. Are you good in the kitchen at all kid? One of them called over to Luffy who laughed loudly. My brother said I'm good at eating, does that count? He asked and got a round of laughter. But he still lets you watch. Sanji asked flipping finished pancakes onto a warm plate. He figured if he fed me first others might get to eat. Luffy said remembering how Thatch would make extra plates for him in the kitchen while making breakfast for the family. You've got a patient family kid. One said and Luffy smiled. I've get the greatest family. Sanji didn't say anything on that due to the fact that he wasn't sure Luffy wanted everyone to know what family he was from. Ace and Sabo had woken up around nine and made their way to breakfast yawning and stretching. While Sabo had dressed himself back into normal clothing Ace had decided to just throw on some random shorts and boots leaving his upper half bare for the world to see. Sanji saw them come in and his brow twitched in annoyance before he flipped another pancake off the pan and whipped it straight into the fire user's face. I normally like my pancakes on a plate served with syrup. Ace said eating the pancake but a tick on his forehead from the fact he had one thrown at him. Didn't you see the sign you shitty bastard? No shirt, no shoes, no service. Sanji said pointing to said sign and glaring fiercely at the man after all, only he was allowed to get the lady's attention like that. One day, I'm going to kill, that cook. Ace said as he turned around going to grab one of the dreaded shirts. You better go pack your things Lou, we're leaving shortly. Sabo said and watched the light drain from Luffy's face. We're leaving. He asked softly and Sanji gave a small sad smile. What? You don't want to go on another adventure? He asked Luffy who turned towards his new friend in shock. Of course I do. He shouted and Sanji smiled. Then go get ready, I'll have breakfast packed up for you for when you go. He said and Luffy smiled brightly before bolting from the room after Ace to pack what was lying around. Thanks. Sabo said to the cook who waved it off. Food is the only way to get him to do anything. Sanji said with a knowing smile before turning back to his plate of food passing it up for bring out. Sabo smiled at the man surprised that in the short amount of time Luffy has spent with him a strong bond had been formed. Luffy packed quickly with Ace's welcomed help and the boys were standing by the marine ship ready to go. Here. Sanji said throwing packed breakfast at the three brothers. Make sure you eat it all. If I find out even a crumb is wasted I'll kick all of your shitty asses. Sanji said and Luffy and Sabo thanked him. Ace looked at the pack before taking a step towards the cook and sticking out his hand. You're a real bastard you know that right. Ace smirked and Sanji took the hand. You're worse, shithead. They smiled at one another accepting each other for the first time. Sanji. When I turn 17 I'll be back so don't go anywhere. Luffy called while boarding the ship waving goodbye. It's not like I planned to leave here. He said but happy to know he'd see the boy again. When they got inside the ship the first thing they noticed was that Garp was gone and a new guy stood before them. Where's Gramps? Luffy asked looking around the guy who blew out a lot of smoke. Your grandfather has been called back to the Grand Line for a short while. I will be staying with you until he returns. The man said looking down at the boys carefully while he walked around them. My name is Smoker. He said and Luffy tilted his head. But that's what you are. He asked thinking of how Sanji was called a smoker for smoking. 
Smoker felt a headache coming on from this group of kids especially the youngest one. That's not the point brat. Your grandfather will be back shortly, we are to finish gathering supplies at the nearest island and meet him at the entrance to the Grand Line. Smoker said and the boys looked at one another. Annie, Smokey why aren't we just going to go through the calm thingy with all the yummy sea kings? Luffy asked and Smoker felt a tick appear on his head. Because it's your grandfather's decision kid, I'm just babysitting you until he gets back. Smoker said smoking his two cigars. Ha <laughs> ha, that's not fun. Luffy said pouting and putting his hands behind his head walking off away from the marine. So we're going up reverse mountain. Sabo asked the marine who didn't expect the brat to know the mountain's name. I'm not going with you, I'm stationed here in the East Blue. Your grandfather will be meeting you just after we gather supplies. It's not like he went far back into the Grand Line. For all Smoker knew though was that Garp had been called about scaring some of the weaker new pirates away from an island. So you're saying we get what, three days away from the old geezer? Ace asked a smile forming on his face at the very thought of being away from the old man. That's Vice Admiral Garp, brat. Smoker said crossing his arms and glaring down at the kid. Yeah I know and we're getting about two days free without training. Ace said in excitement and Sabo couldn't help but smile as well. Garp had been training him to use his pipe properly and he could even coat it with Haki now which was a lot handier than Sea Stone. Ace had better control of his movements, where he would stumble before Garp had balanced him. Garp had shown Ace all of his blind spots and made sure to hit them each and every time so he would protect them better. Garp had also reminded Ace as often as possible that even though he was a Logia, they could still get hurt and even die. Ace had scoffed at his grandfather claiming that he was strong until Garp had knocked the kid to the ground and held him there. Ace understood now since that time, a Logia that thinks himself invincible is the first to get themselves killed. Ace would never underestimate the old man ever again after all he had earned his title, even if he was a geezer. Luffy was looking out over the water silently saying goodbye to his new friend as the restaurant grew further and further away from them. Sighing Luffy would miss his time here which was something he didn't think would happen. When he originally came here he only thought of getting stronger with his brothers and bonding with his grandpa but now, now he wanted to be with his friends. When he closed his eyes he could see Zoro training with that shark grin he wore. He could see Sanji cooking in the kitchen, damn he could even smell the delicious food. He could hear Nami's bossy calls as she kept her eyes on the horizon just in case they needed to change direction. Luffy could feel the warmth that came from those people and he craved it, all of it. He wanted nothing more than to be with his Nakama but he knew it wasn't yet time. He still needed to grow more, train more become stronger so that no one disappeared from him ever. He knew the trials of the new world and he knew that the kids he had met weren't quite ready for them, he could only hope that in three years time they'd be even a little bit ready for paradise. If they were going to survive in paradise and even the new world he'd need around ten crewmates to help him. Luffy had always had hundreds of siblings but this time he only wanted a small family to call his own. Right, now I just need to find my musician. Luffy said to the wind as it blew against his hat making it bend ever so slightly in the breeze causing him to grab hold of it. Within hours Luffy had complained enough about wanting a new adventure that Smoker had commanded the ship stop at the closest island to allow the boy to let off some of his energy. That'll never happen you know. Sabo said placing a hand on the man's shoulder. What won't Blondie? Smoker asked blowing smoke out from his cigars. Getting Luffy to lose some of his energy, the kids filled to the brim with it. You let out even a little and it fills up so fast it's like he never lost any at all. Sabo smirked and Smoker didn't smile instead he got up and went to hunt down the hyper ball called Luffy. Oi kid. Smoker said to the boy who was hanging upside down and raiding the freezer. You see nothing. Luffy said simply while munching on some sort of frozen food. Come with me. Smoker said but Luffy made no attempt to move instead he continued to eat his food just watching Smoker. I said come with me brat. 
he sent his arm up and grabbed Luffy by the scruff of his shirt dragging him to his side. That was so cool. Luffy shouted at Smoker who smirked finally. I ate a devil fruit. He said and Luffy's eyes began to sparkle. Me too. He said and pulled on his face after Smoker had let him go. I didn't know any of Garp's grandchildren had devil fruit abilities. Smoker mumbled wanting to keep this information for later. MN, Ace, and I have fruit powers. Gramps doesn't want anyone to know though so keep it a secret, K. Luffy said giving Smoker one of his brilliant smiles and the man found himself liking the boy even slightly. When you boys become marines it won't matter who knows or not. Smoker said waving his hand as Luffy scrunched his nose up in disgust. I'll never be a marine. He said and Smoker raised a brow. And why is that boy? He was curious after all these were the grandsons of the hero Garp. Because they make Marco into a cranky bastard so I don't like them. Luffy knew that whenever a marine was nearby Marco would become ever so protective and stop him from fighting in any of the battles giving the excuse that Luffy didn't need a bounty quite yet. Marco. Smoker asked narrowing his eyes. Yeah my ma. He said happily and Smoker relaxed slightly. I see what a weird name for a mother. He mumbled quietly heading towards the main deck signaling for Luffy to follow him. I ate the smoke smoke fruit. He said simply and Luffy nodded his head. So that's why you smoke so much. He said happy to figure something out on his own while Smoker just closed his eyes to regain his composure. I'm going to train you kid. I'll work you so hard you won't have the energy to move for days. He smirked pulling out his jute and Luffy got into a stance ready to fight. Good luck. He set his hat overshadowing his eyes making him look feral. I won't need it. He smirked right on back to the boy as they aimed a punch towards each other. By the end of the training session Luffy was flat on his back panting but his eyes were bright. Luffy had removed his shirt at some point during the fight and sweat covered his face and chest as he took deep breaths in and out to cool down. You're stronger than you look. Smoker said leaning up against a wall breathing deeply and lighting two cigars but there was a smile on his face. I'd say, the, same, about, you, Luffy panted out not able to move from where he was. Where did you learn to fight like that kid? Smoker asked him watching the boy carefully. Here, there, everywhere. Luffy said simply but truthfully. No doubt with a grandfather like yours you'd travel far. Smoker said closing his eyes but Luffy sighed before propping himself up on his elbows. I didn't meet Grandpa until I was around seven then we didn't talk until about two months ago. Luffy said and Smoker's eyes snapped open. I was never alone so don't pity me. I'm stronger because I've got people watching my back everywhere. Luffy said and smiled at Smoker who stood up finally cooled down. I've got your back here kid. He said walking away and Luffy chuckled happily. Thanks. He chirped finally before flopping back down letting the night air cool him completely. The next day Luffy was super excited to see an island in the close distance. Apparently this island doesn't have much on it so we plan to skip over it. Smoker said but Luffy gave him a look. The beach. I want to play on the beach for a bit, it's been a while. He said to Smoker after he marched right up to him glaring up at the tall older man who sighed. Smoker turned to a marine grunt who gave Smoker the list of supplies they had and he just shook his head. We'll be fine for a little bit longer so I guess we can make a short stop. He said and Luffy cheered. We won't be going to town you will let your energy out and we will go. Smoker commanded to the boy who nodded his head. Thanks Smokey. He cheered before running off happy. What was that? Ace asked pointing his thumb at the exchange and Sabo laughed. That was Luffy's special power at work again. Sabo said and Ace looked at him funny. Special power? He asked and Sabo nodded. His ability to make friends with almost anyone. Sabo smiled knowing that their little brother was like a blooming flower. It had taken him a long time to grow but once he had sprouted and fully bloomed he would be able to charm almost anyone into doing anything he wanted. 
Ace shook his head with a smile but Sabo gave him a small look as well. Where Luffy is blinded by his growth in a silly way Ace may not be able to see his own growth in that same way either. Ace the boy who scowled and growled at any and all who came near him had learned to smile and laugh. He had learned that there was more to life than hate, there was love. Sabo only hoped that Ace continued on this path and grew into the strong man he knew he could be. We're here. Luffy shouted as they got closer and closer to the approaching island and Sabo smiled softly. That we are. He agreed before dragging both of his brothers below deck to their cabin to change into swim shorts and get Floydas out for the anchors he called his brothers. I'm not wearing those. Ace said to the pink duck a blow up floater toy. Then you're not swimming. Sabo challenged and Ace frowned. I don't need it. He argued and Sabo closed his eyes annoyed. You'll drown and I'm not going to save you. I don't need you to save me. He said and Sabo rolled his eyes. Are you guys done having your lovers quarrel? Luffy asked in his shorts and Floydas with goggles on his head. His words had both boys turning their heads at Luffy who grinned and ducked as Ace kicked his foot over Luffy's head. Where the hell did you learn those words? Ace shouted and Luffy laughed louder. Sanji taught me. Luffy said blocking a punch before bolting through the door away from his brother. Get back here brat. Ace said as he chased after a laughing Luffy and a sighing Sabo. I feel like I sigh more than I should. He muttered to himself before following behind his brothers the pink duck in his arms since Ace would be wearing it whether he liked it or not. Luffy and Sabo built sand castles while Ace sat with his feet in the water watching the waves and his brothers work. The marines for the most part enjoyed the sunshine but remained on the ship leaving the boys to their own. Smoker kept his eyes on them for a while but retired inside when he figured the boys weren't going to wander off. Sabo and Luffy had just put the finishing touches on the castle when a slingshot bullet hit the artwork if it could be called that destroying it into a pile of wet sand. Sabo and Luffy's eyes darkened as they turned their eyes upon the one who had dared to destroy their masterpiece. Greetings sailors. You are trespassing on private land. He shouted and Luffy looked at him fully now his eyes widening slightly but Sabo's were still dark. Oh. And whose land would that be? He questioned sarcastically as Luffy's grin began to split his face. That would be I, Captain Usopp's land and his 80 million followers. Everyone from far and wide addresses me with the title Captain Usopp. He shouted and Luffy stepped away from his wrecked castle. I know. He said simply as both Usopp, Sabo, and even Ace blanked and looked at the boy. My name is Monkey D. Luffy and I've heard all about you. Chapter 58 meet the liar, bonds formed. Usopp stood stunned at the top of the hill where three other very young boys were hiding behind a tree watching their brave captain deal with these outsiders. W what do you mean you know me? Wait. I mean of course you know me. My name and ferocity has been spoken all around the world. Luffy chuckled the boy was just like his father. My name's Luffy, you're Usopp's son right? Luffy asked and Sabo looked at Luffy silently wondering what his brother had in mind. The boy Usopp hearing his father's name stumbled and slid down the hill landing right in front of Luffy his brown eyes looking at the kid in front of him hopeful after hearing his father's name. You know my dad? He asked Luffy who let out his signature laugh. Of course I know him. He sails under a famous captain that I admire, Shanks. He said taking his hat off and holding it in front of him. My dad sails with Shanks? The red-haired Shanks. Usopp whispered in awe and Luffy laughed. Yeah last I saw them he was still there. Your dad's a really good sharpshooter. Luffy said remembering the man and all he could do. But how did you know I'm his son? Usopp asked before Sabo could get the chance to. Your dad told me enough stories about you to make my ears bleed. Luffy laughed out and Usopp felt tears brimming in his eyes. My dad talks about me. He said happily wishing he knew the man. Please. Tell me everything. Usopp cried out to Luffy who laughed a lot more. Sure thing. 
and they both went to sit down under a small tree by the beachside away from the sun to have their conversation. Sabo who had been standing beside Luffy felt a little left out there but it was also the first time he had really had the opportunity to watch Luffy meet other people. He knew of the girl Nami since she took all his cash but he didn't see them meet. It was the same with Sanji since he saw them interact later but he wasn't around for when they became friends. Luffy did mention a swordsman but goodness if they knew how they met. Was this how Luffy made his friends by just being himself? Ace who had been sitting with his feet in the water smiled softly. From all of the people he had seen become friends with Luffy he knew they would be trustworthy. Sabo sighed and sat down beside Ace who laughed at his brother. What's so funny Anchor? Sabo asked Ace using Luffy's old nickname accidentally. You're worrying too much. He smiled and Sabo raised a brow before slipping his feet into the cold blue. And you're not. He asked Ace who shook his head. He'll be alright he's finding his Nakama. Ace said and Sabo felt confused. What happened to only wanting him only for ourselves? Sabo asked him sarcastically and Ace laughed. Luffy will always be our brother that won't change but, to be honest it's kind of relieving. He said and Sabo tilted his head carefully looking at Ace. It's relieving to know that no matter what happens now Luffy is making reliable friends that we can count on. Ace finished hoping Sabo would understand. Sabo felt a pang in his heart, where Luffy had been making friends Ace had been learning to let go. Try telling that to Marco. Sabo laughed out relaxing finally. I will, though I don't think he'll understand until he meets the people Luffy is trusting. Even though he himself had barely met any of Luffy's said friends. And if he meets them do you think that will change anything? Sabo asked knowing Marco's nature and how he would protect Luffy from anything. I would hope so, Luffy won't be a kid for much longer soon he'll want to rule the seas on his own. Ace said smiling and enjoying the sun. Others will be aiming for the same title Ace. Sabo reminded his brother and Ace smirked looking over at Sabo. Do you doubt that our little brother will be the king? Ace challenged Sabo who acted shocked at the accusation. Never. I'm just saying that Luffy won't be the only one aiming for the crown. It's not going to be an easy job going for that title. Sabo said to Ace who closed his eyes and gave a grin worthy of AD. Then he's going to need a reliable crew now won't he? So how'd you meet my dad? Usopp asked Luffy and he laughed quietly. I met your dad a really long time ago, he came to my home with Shanks and I met him then. He remembered the day he first met Shanks and his crew, he couldn't help but wonder what they were doing right now. You know my dad's a pirate right? Usopp asked hesitantly and Luffy laughed loudly at the stupid question. Obviously. He's a damn good one at that. Luffy shouted at Usopp after he removed a laughter tear from his eye. Well it's just that you're on a marine ship. Usopp said embarrassed from the question. Yet it's my grandpa's ship but we're hanging out with some other marine right now. Luffy said nodding his head. Your grandpa is a marine and you're friends with a pirate crew. Usopp asked incredulously. Huh? I'm not just friends with a pirate crew, I'm from one. Luffy said giving a feisty grin. Wait 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 wait. What d do you mean you're from a pirate crew? Usopp asked putting his hands up in front of him distancing himself from the boy slightly. Luffy smiled wider before standing up and pointing to the tattoo on his back. I have to be careful so Smokey doesn't see this but it's my family's mark. Luffy said showing the tattoo fully to Usopp who felt his jaw slacken and drop. That's W Whitebeard's mark. He whispered quietly before looking at the boy with narrowed eyes. Yeah that's my pops. Luffy turned his back away from the marine ship knowing he had to be careful right now. You're friends with Shanks and the son of Whitebeard. Usopp was stunned by all of this information. Then why are you in the East Blue? Does Whitebeard want something here? Usopp was very curious. Nah, Gramps came and told us we were going on a trip and now we're here. Luffy shrugged standing up and walking to grab his blue 56 t-shirt pulling it on. You should stay for dinner. 
Luffy said but it sounded like a command. I I am. Usopp started trying to gather himself after all of the bombs had been dropped on him. What, you find out I'm Pop's son and now you don't like me? A dark shadow crossed Luffy's face at the last time something like that happened. Usopp's eyes snapped open wider at the thought. That's not it. I was just surprised that's all. I the great and amazing Captain Usopp will grace you with my presence tonight for dinner. Usopp said standing up tall and pointing his thumb at his chest. Right that's what I thought. Luffy said regaining his smile and Usopp was left puzzled by this boy. Captain. Three boys shouted finally gaining the courage to come out from behind the tree. Who are they? Luffy asked looking at the three who hid behind their captain's knees. A-H-H. This is my loyal and devoted crew. Usopp said proudly and Luffy tilted his head in confusion. But I thought you had 80 million men. He asked Usopp who sweat dropped. I I do. They're out right now but they'll be back later. He said his voice shaking slightly. A-H-H really, I see. Luffy said accepting the answer and Usopp found he was once again confused. Captain were you able to scare away the intruders? One of them asked and Luffy raised a brow. These people have been graciously accepted my young crewmates. I shall be spending the evening with these people. Usopp said and they nodded their head stars in their eyes. That's our captain. One shouted as Ace and Sabo finally joined in the conversation. What's going on here? Sabo asked confused by the kids around him. Dunno. Luffy said honestly because he was really confused by the kids himself. We are the Usopp pirates. The kids shouted and Ace raised a brow. Well, we are a part of the Whitebeard pirates. He countered with a smirk causing the kids to shiver. Technically we aren't official yet but once we get back we will make it so. Sabo said with a smile as the three boys looked close to fainting. Don't worry boys. I'm friends with these pirates. Usopp said bringing color back into their faces. Our great captain dash dot. One started with stars in his eyes. Has become friends with dash dot. Another finished the same look of pure happiness on his face. White beard pirates. The last said with a smile and Usopp nodded his head his hands on his hips as Ace and Sabo sweat dropped. You sure you want to call this guy reliable? Sabo asked Ace who shook his head but smiled anyways. Luffy chose him so we don't get any other choice in the matter. Ace sighed and Sabo smiled knowing that was the truth. Usopp staying for dinner. Luffy said pulling his friend along towards the ship. Ah, Usopp pirates dismissed. He shouted and the boys gave a salute before running back towards the trees as they watched over their captain as he entered the marine's ship. So cool. Our captain is so cool. They said laughing. So this is what it looks like inside of a marine ship. Usopp said looking at everything as they passed by. Yet it's not that great. Luffy shrugged and his brothers nodded. The ship back home is huge and warmer. A said with a nostalgic smile. Warmer. Usopp questioned and Luffy looked at him with a gentle look on his face. Yeah, a lot warmer. He thought of his family and how welcoming they were and how much he actually missed them right now. Usopp felt like he was being left out of an inside moment but didn't say anything. He could only hope that one day he found Nakamo like that that made him smile in the way the boys in front of him were smiling. Oi brats you're done swimming. Smoker asked he was leaning back on a chair two cigars still in his mouth and a newspaper in his hands. Yup, we made a friend. Luffy cheered as Usopp crossed his arms and declaring who he was to the marine who only just stared at him. He's staying for dinner. Luffy said simply and Usopp nodded his head. We're leaving first thing in the morning. Smoker sighed in frustration your grandfather is finished his work. Smoker pointed to the newspaper but Luffy ignored it. I hope there's meat tonight. He said and Usopp ran off with him below back in excitement. Smoker's brow twitched but he had spent enough time with the boy to know when to let it go. You're growing patient Smokey Ace said to the marine who glared at the teenager. 
Get lost brat. He really didn't have the energy to play games with these kids. Please don't tempt him. Sabo said rubbing his forehead and Smoker just glared at them as Ace scowled at Sabo. I have yet to ever get lost. He said as they both argued out the door Smoker shook his head but once again just let it go. Luffy was showing Usopp around the ship telling him stories from his life as Usopp did the same about his own. Luffy wasn't sure why he felt this way but he liked being around Usopp even if he was a little strange. Luffy felt like they had been friends for a lot longer than now maybe it had something to do with the amount of stories he had heard about said boy but even so. You've had an adventurous life while I barely lived. Usopp said sitting down on Luffy's bed and Luffy frowned. Sure I've done a lot but you've had a different life than me. We both have done things that the other hasn't. Luffy said but it didn't cheer Usopp up any. Do you have any family on this island? Luffy asked. He liked knowing the family his friends had. Since he himself had a huge family he wanted to know if anyone else was like him and who they had there to support them. No. He said and Luffy frowned. My dad set sail when I was just a baby, I barely remember his face and my mom died a few years ago. Usopp said sadly and Luffy sat down beside him. I've never met my mother heck I don't even know if I have one. Luffy said and Usopp finally looked at him with wide eyes. Apparently my dad gave me to Pops and the others when I was a baby but I don't know very much about him. I overheard some of my siblings telling a new guy that my dad gave me to Marco first but I never told anyone that I knew that. He said and Usopp smiled. You didn't tell anyone. And Luffy shook his head no. So I'm the first person, and Luffy looked at him funny. It's a secret I shall keep forever as your friend, Luffy. Usopp said and Luffy laughed. You don't have to be so serious about it, it's not a big deal. He laughed leaning back on the bed and Usopp shook his head. You're putting your trust in me so it is serious. Luffy just laughed and Usopp joined in. So Marco, he's like a mother to you. Usopp asked after they had calmed down. I guess, I don't know, that sounds weird. He said but Usopp smiled. See you did know your mother then. Even if it wasn't your birth mom. And that old guy white beard sounds like a pretty cool dad. Usopp would give anything to make Luffy smile again he didn't like the sad look on his face. You're right, they have been pretty cool parents. Luffy wondered secretly to himself what would happen if he started to call Marco Mama Marco from now on. He smiled at the thought but felt that might be taking it too far. Oi Luffy and his friend, dinner's ready. Ace called down to the boys who smiled. Any Usopp, I was once told by one of my brothers that our story starts with our reflection because it is proof that we are here. I'm not sure what that really means but you're here right now and that's an adventure. Not all adventures have to be huge they can be as big or small as you want them to be. Luffy stood up and started to walk towards the door before turning back to face Usopp who was still sitting on the bed. In three years time I will be returning to the East Blue. Luffy said as Usopp finally found the strength to stand up. When I return, I want you to join my crew. Chapter 59, Dreams and the Last of the East Dinner time with Luffy and his brothers was as it normally was. For Smoker it was nothing new, he had been with the boys for two days now so he was quite used to the chaos that was called feeding time. For Usopp this was an extremely new thing seeing three teenagers scarf down food as if they were starving for days. Why are they eating like that? Usopp asked Smoker who just blew out his cigar smoke. Like I know why they do that. Smoker had been just as shocked on the first day he saw those boys eating like this but by the second day he knew better than to eat slowly with them around. You might want to start eating. He recommended to Usopp who just raised the brow causing the man to look at the three and how their plates were almost empty. If you don't start soon there will be none left for you. Usopp looked at his full plate in confusion before a long hand stretched over and grabbed some off of Usopp's plate. Yelping in surprise Usopp put his arm around his dinner protectively but Smoker chuckled quietly. That won't stop them, start eating brat. 
he said and Yusuf dug in as quickly as possible as he started to notice his plate slowly growing empty. Have you learned a lesson today kid? Smoker asked Yusuf with crossed arms his eyes closed and leaning back on his chair. Yusuf gulped and nodded, today he had learned never to eat his dinner slowly around those three brothers. Yes sir. Yusuf said and Smoker nodded satisfied. So what were you guys talking about down below? Sabo asked Luffy curiously and before Yusuf could open his mouth to say anything Luffy cut him off. I just asked Yusuf to be my friend nothing big. He said as Yusuf looked at him curiously before it dawned on him. Smoker is a marine and Luffy was a pirate so Luffy probably didn't want Smoker to know he was asking people to join his crew. Yes that's right. Luffy asked me to become his best friend. Almost like his twin brother, am I right Luffy? Usopp asked folding his arms across his chest as Luffy gave him a blank stare not quite sure what to say to all of that. Sure. He finally said guessing that was as close as he could get to an answer. Rigged. Ace dragged out unsure of what was happening. I really don't care what you boys decide, tomorrow we set towards reverse mountain so be ready by then. Smoker said dismissing himself from the company of teenagers. Is he always like that? Usopp asked once Smoker had left. Shishishi, he may sound like a jerk but Smokey is actually a really nice guy. Luffy said smiling and Ace shook his head as Sabo just smiled softly. I see. Usopp didn't really see it but went along because Luffy said so. He's one of the very few who have actually pushed me to get stronger. Luffy thought out loud. While Marco, Thatch, his grandpa and the others do want to train him to get strong they hesitate to go any further with his training. Luffy knows it's not because they don't think he can handle it, it's because they don't know what to do if he can. Smoker who has no real connection to Luffy didn't care if he was strong enough or not. Smoker wanted to push Luffy to see how far the boy could go and then push him further. Luffy loved that to have a chance to spar with someone who didn't fear his pops or love him too much to challenge him too hard. Smoker was a good guy and Luffy was happy to call him a friend, even if he was a stupid marine. But we fought you pretty hard before Lou. Ace said leaning on his hand his elbow on the table. Yeah but never like Smoker has. It was like I as actually having a battle but it felt like a game. He couldn't really describe what it felt like to fight someone who was so much stronger than himself and didn't lower his power to help Luffy. You guys aim to my level of experience Smoker taught me that not everyone is going to be as strong as me. I'm going to need to get stronger if I want to survive in these waters. Usopp heard the conviction in Luffy's voice and found himself wanting to get a lot stronger as well. Me too Luffy, I will be strong as well. Usopp said and Luffy laughed. Usopp, why don't you stay overnight? Ace asked the boy as Sabo side-eyed Ace in confusion. I I that would be imposing, I really shouldn't. Usopp stammered out but Luffy had a look of pure joy on his face. Tomorrow I'll be going back home to the Grand Line this will be our last chance for like two years. Luffy said and Usopp couldn't refuse him. What's your plan here Ace? Sabo asked his brother who just smiled at the boys talking energetically. Tomorrow will be Luffy's birthday. Ace said and Sabo's eyes widened he had forgotten. Let's let Luffy spend the night with his Nakama because I have a feeling that tomorrow Marco will be smothering him to death. Ace said giving his grin that Sabo couldn't resist returning. All right, you win. He said knowing that Luffy would have a lot of stories to tell the energetic young boy. You're a really good sharpshooter as well. Luffy asked Usopp who smirked and pointed his thumb at himself. A really good one? You must be talking about my dad. I'm the best sharpshooter you'll ever meet. Usopp said proudly and Luffy's grin widened. Good, as your future captain I can only have the best. Luffy said in response causing Usopp to make a face at him. But I thought I was captain. He asked Luffy who felt a tick on his forehead. Like hell. I'm the captain. He shouted and Ace and Sabo sweat dropped at the exchange. I guess for now I can let you be the captain, 
but if you slip up any I'll take the title out from under your nose. Usopp said and Luffy gave him a small pout. I guess that works. But he wasn't actually too sure about that. Luffy and Usopp talked at the table for a while and Ace brought them a warm cup of hot chocolate as the night went on. For the brothers they could see that Luffy had made a very good friend, what did bother them though were the insecurities that the younger boy carried. A crew was a reflection of its captain but they could only hope that by the time Luffy set sail to fully recruit these people Usopp would be a lot more confident in himself or risk losing the attention of their little brother. So what's the Grand Line really like? Usopp asked excitedly and Luffy put his hand to his chin in thought. Well I don't really know. He said and Usopp made a confused face. But you said you live there. He asked and Luffy nodded his head. Yeah but the Grand Line's huge. I've only been to certain places in it. I mostly stay in the New World since the Marines don't really like it when Pops goes too far close to the Blues. Usopp nodded his head but more questions were bubbling up. The New World, what's that like? He had only heard of the Grand Line not this place called the New World. Well it's dangerous. A lot of pirates leave when they get into it. Luffy said thinking of all the weaklings that fled after getting their butts kicked by Pops and his siblings. And you live there? Usopp asked incredulously. Yeah, a lot of pirates enter the New World and come to challenge Pops for his title. I've seen many pirates come and leave quite quickly. If they're lucky they might have a ship left depending on what they said or did. Luffy knew that Thatch liked to mess with the enemy's ships when they weren't looking and Marco would end anyone who looked at Luffy or his brothers funny. It's where I belong. Here in the East Blue it's relaxing but honestly I'm bored. He admitted and Usopp nodded his head. He had never lived anywhere else before so he didn't fully understand but he did know that from what Luffy was saying the East's calm must be a major shock on him. Gramps said we're lucky we didn't get sick from the change when we came here. Luffy thought and Usopp was confused on that statement. Why because of the weather change? He had heard rumors of the crazy weather in the Grand Line. That and the fact that the Grand Line is chaotic compared to this calm. For me who's lived my life surrounded by fighting and crazy coming here could have caused a shock to my body. I don't really know Grandpa just told me that. Luffy admitted shrugging his shoulders and Usopp smiled at his new friend. Then it looks like if I'm going to be on this crew I have to get a lot stronger. Luffy, when we're 17 we'll have to be strong enough for anything. Usopp said and Luffy grinned. Right we'll take the Grand Line by storm. Luffy said giving his hand out to Usopp who grabbed hold of it tightly. And we'll make the world remember our names. He said gripping Luffy's hand tightly finally after years of being alone Usopp had found a person he could call his best friend. Time for bed Lou. Ace said gathering up the cups that were scattered along the table. Eh? But we're not tired. Luffy said and Usopp agreed but Ace pushed them out of the kitchen as he and Sabo got to work on the dishes. You know they're probably not going to bed. Sabo said putting a drying towel from a cupboard. Yeah I know, I just want them out of the way. Ace said as he ran the water. Should we call Marco and Pops let them know we're coming? Sabo asked and Ace shook his head. Already done. I called Thatch earlier to let him know what was going on. Ace said and Sabo raised a brow at him. And Luffy didn't come. Even Sabo had no idea when Ace had called home. He was distracted with Usopp. Ace said with a small smile as he cleaned the cups and plates. He's really changing isn't he? Sabo asked taking one of the wet cups and drying them and putting it away. He is and that's okay. We're all changing Sabo. Ace said giving his brother a small look as Sabo looked away. Whatever you plan to do, no matter where you go you'll always be my brother Sabo. Ace said and Sabo smiled. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. He said honestly and Ace smiled more. You're always welcome to stay with me until you decide. Ace said to Sabo who shook his head. Luffy knows what he wants, you know what you want I. I don't know yet. He said drying more dishes. 
Sabo had said he wanted to stay with Ace and become one of Whitebeard's official sons but lately he wasn't sure if that was the truth anymore or if he was just saying that for Luffy. Pops would understand you know. Ace said and Sabo finally looked at him carefully. I'm guessing you already know what I want. Sabo said sarcastically and Ace nodded. You want to be free. You're a beautiful bird that's been locked in way too many cages Sabo don't let us lock you in another one. Do what you want and be happy for it because you chose it. Ace said and Sabo looked at the light above trying to burn the tears away from his eyes. Would you hate me if I wanted to not be a pirate? Sabo asked his voice shaking a little. I would hate you if you didn't do what you wanted. He replied and Sabo finally looked down. So I'm allowed to maybe want to be a revolutionary? He asked quietly and Ace laughed loudly. What do I know? I'm never giving you permission to do anything. I'm a pirate Sabo, Luffy's a pirate, Sabo you can be whatever the heck you want to be. No matter what title we carry one thing will never change, and that's our brotherhood. Ace reassured Sabo who smiled softly at Ace. Thank you, Ace. Sabo said and Ace shook his head. You better be the best revolutionary alive. He laughed and Sabo smiled more. What made you want that though? Ace asked him letting the water drain from the sink. Since traveling through the east I've started to notice that this is such a peaceful place. I've seen Luffy blossom into someone I didn't know and I've seen you become something better than you ever were. I want to protect that. I also know of your bloodlines and what people have had to do to keep you guys safe. It's not fair. Sabo said pounding his fist against the countertop. It's not fair that you and Luffy who have such beautiful souls are hated for the sins of your family. And me who was born into a proper family am loved even though my family's sins are far greater than yours. He said and looked Ace in his dark eyes. I wish to create a world where children are born free no matter who their damn parents are. Sabo was breathing hard at this point in time getting worked up on everything. What you're dreaming of is almost naive Sabo. The world isn't just going to change and these problems have been around for so long that it's almost ingrained into the earth itself. Ace said drying his hands on a towel. That's why we need the revolutionaries to help bring about this change. Sabo said with a smile but Ace didn't smile back he only gave Sabo a sad look. Be careful my brother. While good organizations can start for justice they can easily turn into something else over time. The road to hell is paved on good intentions and you have many of those. Ace said and Sabo gave Ace a reassuring smile. It'll be different, I'll make things different. Sabo said and Ace finally smiled but sighed at Sabo. You can't save everyone Sabo. He said turning out the kitchen light and Sabo followed behind his brother leaving the room. No but if I can at least save two, that's good enough for me. He said and closed the door behind him. When morning came Luffy was tired and that was probably due to the fact that the boys were up all night talking. So you're really leaving? Usopp asked him and Luffy nodded rubbing his eyes he was going to need a nap. Yeah it's time to go home, this has been a fun vacation though. He said and Usopp laughed quietly. I'm going to miss you. Usopp admitted and Luffy gave his little laugh. I'll be back soon. He said and Usopp grinned. In two years now right? He asked and Luffy nodded his head having told Usopp it was his birthday the night before. Oi brat time to go. Smoker called and Luffy gave his hand out to Usopp. I'll see you soon. He asked and Usopp grabbed it in return. Next time we meet you better be strong, Captain. He said and Luffy grinned widely. Same to you my sniper. Usopp grinned in return as then waved as the marine vessel set out to the sea ready to bring the boys back to where they belong. Zoro, Nami, Sanji, Usopp. I'll be back soon so wait for me. Luffy called to the wind feeling the change as he became one more year older. Chapter 60, Welcome Home. Happy Birthday. When Thatch got the call from Ace he couldn't help but feel almost surprised since Luffy didn't come running to talk to him nor did Sabo. Ace explained that Luffy had made another new friend and was spending the day talking to him. 
He also explained that Sabo was making life-size decisions right now so he needed some time to be alone. Thatch wasn't too sure what all that meant but it did make him feel anxious which probably wasn't good. Ace had explained that Luffy's new friend was trustworthy but a bit insecure but Luffy had chosen him so there was nothing anyone could say or do. Ace talked with only Thatch for a while before the real reason he called came up, they were coming home. Tomorrow they would be coming over Reverse Mountain and wanted Pops and the others close by to pick them up. Thatch laughed at Ace because Pops already knew they were coming home. Garp had apparently been in paradise causing Marco to both panic at the thought of Garp being away from the brats and feel excitement because that could mean the kids were back in home waters. Of course Pops called Garp as soon as possible once he found out he was away from the kids and Garp explained the plan of them coming home rather reluctantly. So from there they had been making their way towards the mountain for a few days now ready to pick up the brats. The crew had become alive again, Thatch never really noticed just how dreary they had gotten since the boys left. Marco was smiling more and even cleaning up their room so they had fresh blankets and clothes for when they got home. Pops was drinking a bit more which was causing his nurses to scowl a lot and even try to talk him away from the bottle. All the nurses got in the end was a loud laugh from the older man who was drinking for his reunited family. Everyone was laughing once more but Thatch was doing the biggest preparation for the brats. He was going to be making the birthday cake and dinner for Luffy. Luffy was now about to be 15 years old so he wanted to do the best birthday celebration possible for the kid. If Thatch thought he'd have to remind Marco about Luffy's birthday he found himself mistaken. Marco, while cleaning Luffy's room had placed gifts all around the bed and even some new clothes in the dresser. Izzo had helped with the making of the clothing and each of the crew members had picked out a gift for the boy to be placed in the room. Thatch was happy, for the first time in two months he felt things were going back to normal and once the boys were home they'd make sure to keep them there for as long as possible. Marco had missed the phone call from Ace since he was busy helping around the ship preparing for the party to take place but he got the idea of what was happening. He knew Luffy was making friends and he would question the boy later on them the very thought that he could physically question Luffy on his friends made him smile wider. They were coming home and that was all that was needed to be said for Marco's face to her from the smile he had been wearing ever since. They were almost home he could see the mountain in the distance and it took all of his strength not to just fly off and meet the boys at the bottom of it. We're almost there. Thatch said coming up beside his friend as he too was excited to see his brats. Marco didn't say anything as he just watched the ship sail closer and closer until they finally reached the red line where they knew the boys would be coming down from. They're not here yet yo it. Marco said in worry as he jumped from the ship onto the red line's shore waiting for a ship to come down from the mountain. Maybe they're late. Thatch asked jumping beside his friend and walking along the shoreline while Pops and a few of the other commanders watched from the ship keeping their eyes open for the marine vessel. Marco was getting worried as he sat down by the mountain and just thought about the what-ifs, and worrying himself into knots. Thatch didn't sit down because he felt it. A feeling he knew so well since it was one he practically lived off of mischievousness and his smile began to form on his face. A little red blur with black hair went running past him and launched itself onto Marco's back surprising the first division commander into the water along with the boy. Jeez. He scowled but smiled quickly before diving into the ocean to save them both from a watery grave. Once both drowned people were pulled from the water Thatch attempted to dry himself off before the boy could get back up and launch himself at him this time. Yes, yes I missed you to Luffy. He said hugging the boy back and Marco looked up quickly anger diminishing into happiness once he realized that it was his Luffy who had pushed him into the water. Boy brats? Why didn't you stop him yo? Marco called over to Ace and Sabo who were leaning against a wall but smiled all the same. And miss seeing you getting flung into the water? Never. Ace said walking over his face into a wide grin and Sabo a small smile. Welcome home brats. Thatch said letting Luffy go and pulling both Ace and Sabo into a big bear hug. We're home. Ace said and Sabo remained silent a small battle in his heart still raging. Come here kid yo it. 
Marco said opening his arms as Luffy ran towards him hugging his brother tightly. I missed you yo. Marco said into Luffy's black hair his voice wavering slightly. I missed you more. Luffy laughed but Marco shook his head. That's not possible kid yo. He let Luffy go and took a good look at the boy. He had grown a bit taller and filled out a bit more. Where's Pops? Luffy asked excitedly not one to stay in the same place for long. I'm here my son. Pops called from the ship and Luffy ran towards it jumping to the railing and then racing towards his father. Pops. He called jumping into the older man's arms for a hug. I'm home. He said and the older man smiled softly at the boy. I can see that, shall we begin our journey back to the new world? He asked and everyone cheered. Not yet. Luffy said and ran back to the railing and called out to his grandfather. Gramps. The old man was now coming around on the ship where it had been hiding until the pirate crew showed up. Get going kid. Garp said frowning but all could hear the fondness in the man's voice. Thank you for everything. Because of you I got a chance to meet my friends and see where Ace and Sabo grew up. So thank you, really. Luffy said to his grandfather who had tears in his eyes but refused to cry. Someday soon I'll be a pirate of my own. Say hi to Smoker for me. Luffy said since they had left Smoker on the last island before the Grand Line. Bye Gramps. Ace called beside Luffy and Sabo waved as well the old man couldn't take it anymore and burst into tears as he waved his grandchildren off but reminded them they were to become Marines. I take it you had a fun time. Vista asked to the boys who all looked at one another and smiled. It's been an adventure. Ace said grabbing his new tattoo which others started to notice. When did you both get tattoos? Thatch asked checking them out. Back on the first island we landed on we got them. Luffy said causing many to freeze up. What do you mean we yo it? Marco asked coming up beside them as Sabo pushed Ace out in front reluctantly. Marco listen, Luffy's a growing man he can do whatever he likes okay. Ace put his hands up in front of himself protectively. Luffy. Pops called and Luffy took his shirt off and showed everyone his mark. See isn't it cool? He asked and Marco just stared at it. The mark was a blue cross with a blue and gold feather bringing it all together to make Pops mark. It, it's beautiful yo it. Marco whispered happy but also angry that Luffy did this without any permission from the family. Isn't it? I got it for you and Pops Luffy said now starting to feel a bit embarrassed. For my father and. I guess my mother. He said looking away and a few chuckled. Looks like you've been upgraded from mother hen to an actual mother now. Thatch joked lightly but Marco was smiling. I guess so yo it. He said back before grabbing the kid's straw hat and pushing it onto Luffy's head forcefully. It was Usopp who made me think about you like that. Luffy said remembering his conversation with the sniper to be. Oh and what's Usopp like? Haruda asked sitting down and Luffy joined her as he began his tale of what his new friends were like and how he had met each of them. Nami was the first one I met she's got an attitude but she's super friendly. She's also the best navigator around. He said remembering Nami and how she was able to take him where he needed to go each time. Something's not right with her though. He said remembering the sad look in her eyes even though she was smiling. Oh. Haruda asked him a frown on her face. Something's hurting her, someone's hurting her and I don't know how to stop it, he said shadows in his eyes were seen and Marco didn't like that. Then you'll have to fix it right yo it. Thatch turned to Marco a confused look on his face. Right. Luffy said a smile returning to his face because he would fix it. No matter who it was or what it was no one touched his friends his family and got away with it. Then I met Zoro. Luffy said thinking of his next adventure and how he had met his best friend. Zoro is my best friend in this world. I almost feel like I'd be lost without him. Luffy said a small smile on his face. He's going to be the greatest swordsman in the world. He said and Vista grinned, his eyes sparkling at the thought of a good swordsman. Is he good? 
Thatch asked his hand on his own katana at his hip. He will be the best. Luffy said with confidence in his dark eyes showing his faith in the swordsman. That's not a title one gets easily Luffy. Vista said but Luffy shook his head. As the future pirate king I expect nothing less from my first mate. His voice was stern and serious causing many to raise their brows at it. It was almost as if Luffy was another captain on this ship speaking with Pops rather than their brother having a conversation with them. We didn't meet him so we can't tell you anything else on him. A said shrugging his shoulders and Luffy gave him a look. I don't question you on your friends. He said and Ace flinched back at the tone. That's because most of my friends are family. He said in his defense while Luffy just ignored him and went back to talking with the others. Then I met Sanji. Sanji is an amazing chef. He makes the best food possible. He said his mouth beginning to water at the thought of food. Oh? Is he better than me? Thatch asked him teasingly and Luffy grinned. He might be. The challenge in Luffy voice made Thatch grin in excitement. I'd love to meet him. He said wanting to test out the boy's skills even more. Yeah but he smokes like a chimney. Sabo said rolling his eyes and many laughed. Those things don't taste good. Luffy said remembering his first time smoking. Please don't tell me you ate one of his cigarettes. Thatch said knowing the boy would eat anything in his path when hungry. Nope Sanji let me try smoking one. Luffy said casually and Marco's eyes darkened. Oh yes, I'd love to meet that chef of yours yo it. He said ever so sweetly but Luffy missed the danger. Yeah you guys would love him. Sabo chuckled at the thought of the little chef being interrogated by Marco. We went to a party and Sanji dressed me up he even made a spicy drink for me but Sabo drank it instead. Luffy said turning his face towards his brother and pouting. I thought it had alcohol in it. Sabo said and Marco's face darkened more. Maybe we should move away from the chef, how about your next friend? Thatch said not knowing how much more of that Marco could take. Marco was fuming, he had let Luffy out of his sight for a moment and the boy had come back with a tattoo, tried smoking, and even nearly drank. If these were the friends Luffy was making he would need to give them a good talking to. I met Usopp. He's Usopp's son. Luffy said excitedly and a few people's eyes widened in surprise. That's a member of Shank's crew. Harada said knowingly with a smile. Many had heard the tales of the sniper's little son back home. Pops being a father himself here had listened dutifully but even he could grow tired of the ramblings after a while. Is he like his father any? Pops asked interested and Luffy gave a half smile. He has a long way to go. He's talented like his dad but he's nervous and insecure. Ace answered for Luffy who nodded sadly. He'll be the best I can guarantee it but... It might take a while. Luffy admitted but was happy to call Usopp his friend. He's also a liar. Sabo said and Luffy gave his brother a look. Really? Sabo shook his head at his innocent brother. Those are my friends. In two years time I will be meeting Zoro on his home island and we will set out to find Nami, I think I know where she'll be. Ace looked at him confused. And how's that? Luffy smiled sadly. There's an island she wants me to stay away from. I think that's where the bad stuff happening so I'll go there and she might be there. He said with his own logic. All right, but can you get there with just that Zoro guy? Ace asked him and Luffy laughed loudly. Do know. He admitted making many sweat drop. Sabo who had been involved with the conversation but didn't feel like he wanted to be there slowly started to phase himself out and move towards Pops. Any Pops whenever you get a chance can I talk to you? He said looking down and Pops smiled softly at his son. Of course. He said standing up and walking away with Sabo. What's wrong with Sabo yo it? Marco asked noticing he was acting strange. Sabo just needs some time with Pops that's all. Ace said and Luffy frowned. So he's decided. And Ace turned his head quickly towards Luffy his eyes wide. How did you dash? 
he asked and Luffy frowned. I'm not as big an idiot as you think I am. He scowled and once again Ace felt bad. I think he has. He admitted slowly and Luffy nodded. Good. Pops will help him out then. Luffy stood up leaving a lot of people confused on what was happening with the brothers. Are we missing something? Thatch asked and Luffy shook his head. That's Sabo's secret to tell if he wants. He said before complaining about being hungry. Right but before you eat go check out your room kid. Thatch said grinning and Luffy tilted his head in confusion. What why? Ace started to catch on. Because it's a special day Lou. He cheered and Luffy looked even more confused. It's children's day right? He asked and Ace blanked before Marco pushed Luffy forwards towards his room. It's also your birthday yo it. Marco said and Luffy began to smile as he remembered. He had been so caught up in the fun of Reverse Mountain and telling all about his friends he forgot that he was now officially 15 years old. When he opened the door to his cabin he saw the presence surrounding his bed and the cleanliness of the room. Did you guys do this? Luffy asked in awe as he touched his bed and felt like crawling in it like he had done so many times before. Being away from home had made him miss what was his. Why don't we open them after dinner? We have a party to have. Thatch said and Luffy cheered as he rushed to the galley and took his special seat where he had carved his name so many years ago. Sabo had entered the galley his eyes red but a wide smile on his face. You talk to Pops? Luffy asked him and he nodded. Yeah Pops is going to help me out. He whispered as the three hugged each other. Good, let's eat. Luffy said breaking away from his brothers and going back to his seat where Thatch had begun to place plates around the table for them to all take from and Luffy didn't hesitate. Everyone was laughing and some were drinking so much they were crying. After dinner Thatch had brought out a strawberry cake and a round of happy birthday had been sung much to Luffy's excitement and embarrassment but he sang along with them as well. Luffy had never partied this hard before so by 3 in the morning he was so tired he went straight to the figurehead and flopped down closing his eyes falling asleep. Marco was heading to bed himself but stopped to see the boy on the figurehead causing a small smile to come to his face as he jumped the railing moving towards the boy. Some things never change do they yo it? He asked softly as Luffy was snoring away. Marco picked the boy up marveling on how heavy he had gotten. Once upon a time he bottle fed this boy, had changed his diapers, taught him to walk, talk, and play. Marco had seen him fight with others, laugh with others, get hurt and learn to apologize. He had seen him find his dream and decide to aim for it, had watched him make friends with those who hated him, had seen those friends become his brothers and protectors. Marco had seen the boy make his own decisions and even learn to say no to his family. Marco had watched Luffy grow and as he placed the boy into his bed he couldn't stop the tears come to his eyes at the thought of all that had happened from beginning to now. Happy birthday, my son Yoi. He said tucking the boy in and putting the straw hat on the dresser and walking towards the door. Night ma. Luffy mumbled in his sleep and Marco smiled closing the door silently. Chapter 61, Sabo's Dream Sabo was happy to be home that much he would admit but at the same time he felt distant from the others, almost as if he didn't quite belong. He knew his brothers wouldn't want that and were not trying to make him feel like an outsider, it was him that was causing this. It was his own feelings and thoughts that were separating him from his family and it killed him. Luffy was acting like a captain to be and he felt proud as his big brother. He watched as the 15-year-old held himself strong and even challenged his siblings while putting his complete faith in these kids he had chosen to be his Nakama. Ace was laughing more since they had gotten home and he knew everyone had noticed the change. Ace hadn't laughed as much while traveling through the East Blue but Sabo was sure that was because the place itself brought up hard memories for him. Now that they were home Ace could relax and be himself because he fit here almost as if he was a missing piece of this family's puzzle but now it was whole again. Sabo thought Luffy might be like Ace a missing piece of this family's huge puzzle but he found himself surprised to see Luffy was much like himself. 
Luffy fit ensure he had the same shape and structure to fit anywhere in this family but his colors were different. Luffy showed that even though he fit in here he very much belonged elsewhere and he wasn't afraid to shout that out to everyone. Sabo envied that about Luffy since he himself couldn't do that. Sabo loved his family here honestly. He loved the way Thatch could always make him laugh when he wasn't feeling like smiling. He loved the seriousness of Marco but the change of personality whenever Luffy was mentioned. He also loved how Marco would always take the time to listen to whatever was on his mind no matter what. He loved how Vista would always stop whatever he was doing to show Sabo how to hold his pipe properly so he didn't hurt his back. He loved how Izu would go shopping with him whenever he needed new clothes and wasn't afraid to give him opinion on the outfit at hand. He couldn't help but laugh at the one memory of Izu nearly shooting the sales clerk for trying to overcharge him on the items. There was so much he could say about his family and all they had done for him and the amount of love he had for them but at the end of it all he still didn't feel like this is where he belonged. Any pops, whenever you get a chance can I talk to you? Sabo asked but he couldn't look up at his father. He couldn't bear to see sad eyes or gentle ones since he didn't feel he deserved them. Of course. He said standing up surprising Sabo since he wasn't expecting Pops to want to talk right now. You don't have to talk now. I I mean I can wait. It's Luffy's birthday, I'm not important dash dot. Sabo started but stopped at the look his father was giving him. You're just as important as every one of my children. Luffy isn't any more special than Ace, Marco, or yourself. Luffy's birthday will continue on whether we are talking or staying so let us talk for a while. He said and Sabo could only nod and follow his father away from the growing crowd. He saw Luffy and Ace look at him so he gave them a weak smile that Ace returned but Luffy just gave Ace a look. Sabo knew that Ace knew what was happening but he had no clue about Luffy since he could be very unpredictable. Sometimes Sabo felt had Luffy all figured out and suddenly he would turn around showing a whole different side of him which made him very tricky to read at times. Sabo had been so caught up in his own mind he hadn't noticed he was now standing in front of Pop's room. Shall we talk? Pops asked him and Sabo nodded entering it and sitting in an old chair by the bed where Pop sat down on. What is on your mind, son? He asked Sabo who was almost shaking with nerves. I don't know how to say what's all been on my mind. He got out past the lump forming in his throat. Take as much time as you need. Pop said resting. He would always be there for his children no matter how long he needed to wait. I've changed since everyone last saw me. Sabo started slowly thinking back on what he was like before leaving with Garp while Pops remained silent letting the boy decide where to go with this. I saw Luffy blossom and make friends which was hard for him to do. I saw how Ace has grown into a man, I've even seen him fall in love. They have been changing right before my eyes and for a while I felt like I was the one being left behind by my brothers. He said and Pops eyes softened at his young son. I thought about Luffy's dream to become a captain of his own and watched him work to make that dream a reality, my little Luffy is starting to look and act more like a man. He said looking at Pops as tears were forming in Sabo's eyes. Ace has so much more to grow into but if given the chance he could become one of your strongest commanders. Sabo said but Pops needed to finally interrupt him. You didn't come to me to talk about their changes though did you? He asked and Sabo nodded his head. Sometimes it takes noticing the changes of the ones you love to notice your own changes. I realized that I was just going along with Luffy and Ace and had forgotten what it was like to have my own dream. He said a tear finally falling down his face. Have you remembered? Pops asked him smiling and wiping the tear off the blonde's pale cheek. I think I have Pops. Taking a deep breath Sabo looked up at his father figure, the man who had accepted him, taken him in and loved him unconditionally. I want to create a world where Luffy and Ace can live free. He said and Pop smiled at him. They are free my son. He said but knew Sabo had more to say. Through you they are free Pops but not in the world. Ace is bound by so many chains that sometimes I think he can't see an escape from them. If he hadn't met you I don't know what his fate would be like today. 
Sabo admitted sadly. And Luffy while happy and surrounded by so many people will someday realize the world thinks he's a monster that should never have been born. Pops was about to interrupt him on that but Sabo held his hand up while leaning over his blue eyes dark and sad. You didn't ever see them Pops. You didn't see how dark Ace's eyes could become as a kid or how he questions his own birth day in and day out. To even think the world could cause Luffy's eyes to become like that scares the living shit out of me. I want to create a world where he can live in peace and that's why. He said taking another deep breath to tell his father his one true dream. That's why I want to become a revolutionary. He said and then looked away just waiting for Pops to put him down for that dream and call it ridiculous. What Sabo got instead of ridicule was laughter a joyful sound not a mocking sound. If that is your dream then you must chase after it, understand though that no matter where you go you will always be my son. Sabo's eyes widened and the tears came all at once. Bending over and hiding his eyes with his hands Sabo couldn't help but feel happiness. Thank you. He got out through his tears his voice shaking as Pops pulled the teenager into a tight hug. Always my son. He said and brushed his large fingers through the boy's hair soothingly until the tears slowly stopped. You know of Luffy's birth father, correct? Pops asked once Sabo had calmed down and was wiping his cheeks clean. Mn. He knew that Luffy's father was a revolutionary as well. Allow me to get in contact with him to see if he would allow a new recruit into his wings. Pops smiled and Sabo stood up and bowed. Thank you Pops. He said and the old man chuckled. Let us go and join your brothers before they get too worried. He said and Sabo grinned weakly but followed Pops to the galley happily. There Luffy was bouncing excitedly in his seat but raced to him when he entered the room. You talk to Pops? Luffy asked quietly and Sabo nodded his head as Ace walked over to join the conversation. Yeah he's going to help me out. Sabo whispered as Ace and Luffy pulled him into a hug. Sabo was forever grateful for the family he had been given but it was time for him to spread his wings and see the world, maybe he would write that book he once talked about. By the end of the night Luffy had fallen asleep on the figurehead and the sight of Marco carrying him back to his room made Sabo smile. Pops will be having a friend of his come and visit me soon. Apparently he's friends with a fishman named Hack who's a part of the revolutionaries. Sabo said as Ace walked up beside him. Luffy knows. He whispered and Sabo smiled. I was wondering if he knew, that brat. Sabo just shook his head at the amount of knowledge the boy had but the lack of the knowledge he showed. Luffy was such a contradictory of himself that so often it made his head spin. Who's the friend? Ace asked him curiously and Sabo smiled. Remember Jinbi? We met him once on Fishman Island. He's apparently friends with this other guy in the revolutionary so he'll be coming to visit me. Sabo said happy but he also had more news for Ace. Pops is going to talk with Luffy's father. Ace froze for a moment before looking at Sabo. Will that help? He only knew a few things about Dragon. He's the leader of them Ace I'll need to meet him if I want to get anywhere. Sabo turned to face Ace who nodded slowly taking it all in. Ace you should tell Pops about your birth father. Sabo said and got the reaction he knew was coming. Why should I? He has nothing to do with my life. Ace snarled and Sabo shook his head. Then it's time to let him go. Telling Pops will help you release that pent up anger and might help you feel better. Sabo said before stepping back away from the railing looking out on the seas. Yumi and Luffy will be setting out on our own Sabo said and Ace crossed his arms and frowned. I'm staying here. He said bluntly and Sabo nodded his head. I know, what I meant was that we're going different ways now. We won't be able to be at each other's backs all the time protecting them. Sabo said sadly but turned himself completely to look Ace in his eyes. Remember this Ace, no matter what happens, where you are or what problems you're having. If you ever call my name I'll be there in a heartbeat damned be any orders asked of me. Sabo was serious should Ace or Luffy ask for his help he'd be there in a moment. Same with you. We're brothers no matter our distance or title. 
Never forget that Sabo. A said and they fell into a comfortable silence. The winds of change were upon them and the three boys were getting their sails ready to catch it. Sabo would go one way and Luffy another Ace felt saddened by the fact his family was splitting apart but happy because they were going to both be doing what they loved in this world. Be the best. Ace said finally pushing away from the railing and walking towards his room waving goodnight missing Sabo's words in the wind. I want you to be better. Chapter 62, Goodbyes Are Not Forever It had been a week of hell for Sabo or at least in his eyes it had been. Sabo had decided it was time to tell the family that he would be leaving in a month's time. Of course the moment he said he was leaving a roar of protests rang across the ship. Thatch had just got his brats back and now one was leaving and another would be gone in two years time. It's his decision. A said after another one of his siblings had asked him to make Sabo stay. Forcing him to stay is taking away his freedom, can you really do that to him? Luffy asked coldly as more came to him after being shot down by Ace. They found Luffy's cold voice and shadowed eyes to be worse than Ace's shrugging and smiling. But he's our brother. Thatch said sadly to Luffy who gave a loud exaggerated sigh. And wherever he is he will still be your brother. Ace said walking up behind the growing group to help Luffy out. When I leave I'll still be your brother even if I'm far away. Sabo's no different. Luffy said and Thatch nodded but still felt sad. Jinbi will be here soon. Ace told Luffy who grinned happy to see his friend. Really? Luffy asked in excitement and Ace nodded. Jinbi would be coming to talk with Sabo and direct him to hack who would there take him to Dragon. You don't sound worried kid. Thatch said sitting on the railing and Luffy gave a small smile. I don't know much about my dad. What I do know though is that if Sabo is strong enough which I think he is then he'll be fine no matter what. Luffy said shrugging his shoulders and A smiled back at him. And if something does go wrong he'll always have a place back here. Ace pointed out and Thatch nodded. He'll also have a place in my crew no matter what. Sabo had been listening to his brother's talk and he did feel a bit emotional about their conversation but also annoyed at it. I'm not joining your crew Luffy. He muttered to himself knowing the kid probably didn't hear him. While Jinbi was to come for him Marco had taken Luffy's training seriously and was pushing the boy every day as often as possible. Marco seemed to believe that Luffy was strong but could be stronger and needed the extra push to get there. It was Ace who told Marco about Luffy's spar with the marine smoker and how Luffy loved being challenged further. Since then Marco hasn't been holding back and Luffy finally loved it. What made the crew laugh though was that every time Luffy got a bruise of any color Marco would apologize instantly and Luffy would miss the moment and continue fighting. The first time it happened Luffy knocked Marco across the deck landing his first blow ever on his mop. And while Luffy was ecstatic about the blow he was also concerned. Luffy then bragged for about it three days after he had done it, after he had made sure Marco was actually okay of course. Thatch who wasn't a fruit user was working to teach Luffy to better control his armament hacking. He had made it clear that whenever they spared he would be aiming to teach the boy his weak points by hitting them constantly. Logius tend to think they're untouchable Luso use that to your advantage. Thatch said grabbing Ace by the shoulder and throwing him around like a rag doll as proof. Thatch. Ace shouted getting himself back up he had just woken up from a narcoleptic fit and still felt rather weak. So if I train with you I might be able to kick Ace's ass. Luffy asked his eyes wide and sparkling but Ace just laughed. Keep dreaming Luffy, I'll always be able to kick your butt any day and time. He said grabbing his bag of chips that had fallen out of his hand and continued to walk away from them. Were those chips? Luffy asked suddenly poking his head around Thatch and sniffed the air excitedly. What do you want more kid those chips or the chance to kick Ace's ass? Thatch asked him seriously not having all day. The mental battle that went on in Luffy's head was an amusing sight for him to see as Luffy began to sweat and make faces and hand gestures. Luffy had to choose between his stomach and a chance to get stronger which was never an easy battle to fight. In the end Thatch chose for him by punching him in the face knocking him backwards across the deck. 
If you can't make the proper decision on time Luffy your crew will pay for it with their lives. He scolded as Luffy wiped blood off of his chin. We won't be at your back to protect you should you hesitate, and the world will kill off those who show weakness. Thatch said cracking his wrists ready to go again. Right I won't hesitate this time. He said forgetting the snacks all together and focusing on his training with Thatch. Thatch gave a smirk knowing he had the boy's full attention now so he would do everything he could to keep it. Let's see how fast you can get kid. Thatch asked running past him aiming a kick for Luffy's lower back but the boy sensed it and turned on his toes away from the kick and bent backwards using his own foot to try and kick Thatch in the chin. You're flexible use that to your advantage. Thatch called to Luffy before landing a punch on Luffy's chest knowing it would bruise since he used hacking. I won't apologize kid, if you don't want to get hurt then don't get hit. Thatch said to Luffy who had flown a distance backwards but landed on his feet. Luffy was breathing heavily since they had been fighting non-stop for about an hour now and that was the longest he had ever fought for. Glaring at Thatch since he was now tired and rather cranky, Luffy got himself into a stance that felt comfortable for him to breath. Good, find your favorite stances and work thorough them to make your movements flow better. Thatch smiled the kid was picking up on things quicker than he expected. I'm going to kick your ass. Luffy shouted to his brother who laughed loudly. Then prove it. He called back but that's when something weird happened. Luffy felt his head grow lighter almost like his blood had started to move really quickly through his body. He didn't know what was going on only that he felt like he could fly all of a sudden. Thatch was watching the boy carefully something was off now and he couldn't help but think he might have pushed him too far. Marco would kill him if the kid dropped for a few days after this so he was ready to call it off until Luffy started to move. Luffy kicked off the ground where he was and in the blink of an eye was right in front of Thatch returning the punch he had been given knocking Thatch off his feet. Right after delivering the blow Luffy fell to his back and breathed deeply tired and now very hungry. Observers above were shocked that their Luffy had been able to hit Thatch when for the past hour the man was able to avoid all of the kid's hits altogether. What the heck kid? Thatch said in surprise wiping the blood off his lip but a smile came to his face. Luffy was fast, faster than his observation hacky could catch and that was amazing. Food. Luffy called out hungrily and Thatch laughed. Alright, I guess you do deserve a snack or two hundred. He said with a smile but was still eyeing the kid. Food. Luffy just said again holding his stomach but pulled himself up into a sitting position. Lou, what was that? Thatch asked wanting to know how the kid got so fast suddenly. What was what? He asked in confusion not understanding what Thatch was talking about. Luffy just fought with all his strength nothing else. Once Luffy was up and running towards the kitchen Thatch stood up and removed his sweaty shirt trying to cool down. He did something weird. Thatch said and Marco was leaning against the railing above giving a soft smile. He's Luffy, doing something weird is in his biological nature yo it. Marco countered. I think I saw steam come from his body but it was so quick I'm not sure if my eyes were tricking me. Thatch pointed out and Marco nodded. No one's been able to get past my observation hacky in a really long time. Thatch sighed. Then maybe it's a good thing we're training them isn't it? This way we can retrain ourselves yo it. Marco knew the comforts of being on this ship and how people didn't usually want to mess with you knowing you were the son of the strongest man in the world. I don't think he will be able to use whatever he just did for a while. He didn't even realize he did something. Thatch said and Marco nodded. Maybe it's better that way, whatever he did knocked him out yo it. Marco said worriedly. I thought that was my training. Thatch said with a smirk but Marco shook his head looking at Thatch. He was just tired but whatever he did at the end to hit you took a toll on his body and ended the fight yo it. Marco was an observer and knew that Luffy's body may be strong but he was still very young. We'll keep an eye on him. Thatch promised to Marco knowing he was worried and the man nodded knowing that was all they could do since Luffy would do whatever he wanted either way. 
A week had passed and while Luffy had been training with Marco and Thatch Ace had been trying to decide if he should talk to Pops about what was bugging him or not. It was around dinner time one evening when Pops called him over alone. What's up Pops? Ace asked his father figure taking a seat in the older man's room. Ace, as you know our second division has been without a commander for a long time. Pops said and Ace felt his stomach turning in knots. Yes yeah, since we were kids. He said slowly wondering where this was going but knowing full well where it would lead. Your brothers and other commanders have voted on the new second commander and wish for that person to be you. He said and Ace hung his head which wasn't the reaction that Pops had hoped for. I'm honored but isn't there anyone else that might deserve it more? He asked quietly and Pops shook his head. We have all decided and agree that you alone would fit the role perfectly. He smiled but Ace's eyes were dark and sad. The darkness in them reminded the old man of what Sabo had said a few weeks prior to him. At this moment he wondered if those chains that Sabo had mentioned were still holding Ace bound and trapped. Take your time deciding my son, I'll be waiting for your answer when you're ready. Ace nodded bowing to his father and leaving the room quickly. When he left he noticed quickly that Luffy and Sabo were waiting for him. So did Ya accept? Luffy asked excitedly and Ace shook his head. What, why not? Sabo asked annoyed at Ace. I didn't say no, I just need time. Was all he said walking past his brothers towards his own room. Ace the galleys that way. Sabo said pointing in the right direction but Ace shook his head once again. I'm not hungry. He whispered and continued to walk towards his room leaving stunned brothers behind him. Did we mess up? Luffy asked Sabo sadly but he couldn't reply because honestly he didn't know. He was so sure that Ace would be happy to be a commander, heck even the other commanders thought he'd be happy. Let's go eat Lou. Sabo said turning towards the galley where he knew his family would be gathering. But Ace. Luffy started worry in his voice. Needs to go through his heart right now and make this choice on his own. Sabo said in finality knowing that this was Ace's struggle and much like Luffy learning to make his own decisions it was time for Ace to do the same. Jinbi had arrived a few days after and welcomed the tackling hug from Luffy. Welcome home. Luffy called out to his friend who patted the straw hat boy on his head. It's good to see you're well, Luffy Kun. He said and looked around. Where's Ace Kun? Sabo frowned and shook his head. Being moody. Was all he said and Jinbi laughed. Nothing's changed then has it? Sabo finally laughed for his friend. I was able to get in contact with Hack and he'd like to meet you. Jinbi said to Sabo who nodded his head. When do we leave? Sabo needed to know and Jinbi smiled softly at the boy. In two days time we will head in that direction. I don't want to be seen with the revolutionaries so I will be delivering you to the closest area where Hack will meet you from there. Jinbi said and Sabo nodded understanding completely what the fishman was saying. Ace had been watching from the shadows and felt sadder as the conversation went on. This was it, Sabo was about to follow his dreams and Luffy was preparing to follow his. Ace knew he would be a good commander. He was respected by many on the crew and loved by all but the idea of him the devil's spawn being loved like that, he wasn't so sure he deserved it. What's on your mind view it? Marco asked coming up beside him. What isn't? Ace asked and Marco laughed. Want to talk about it? Marco asked turning towards Ace who just sat down wrapping his arms around his knees unsure where to start. How are you okay with Luffy leaving? He asked suddenly and Marco looked at the man shocked before laughing. Because I know no matter where he is he'll always have our eyes watching his back yo it. Marco answered simply and Ace looked up. But what if people start to call him a monster? What if he changes and becomes different? What if something goes wrong and he starts to hate himself? Ace asked and Marco kneeled down in front of Ace. Then we'd remind him that he's loved that the world can call him everything under the sun but we'll forever call him our brother. And should he begin to hate himself we'll all have to remind him why he should love himself, just as we would any of our siblings yo it. 
Marco said to Ace who looked down resting his head on his arms his eyes watering. Even me. He asked quietly and Marco stood up giving a large grin. Especially you, you are loved Ace, you are homo. He said and he left Ace to himself to come to his own decision on what that conversation could mean to him. Sabo and Luffy were visiting with Jinbi but he had taken the day to be alone, to really think things through. By the evening Ace had found himself frozen out front of Pop's door unsure what he should do. Taking a deep breath he knocked on the door hoping in the back of his mind that Pops was already asleep and wouldn't answer. Enter. Pops called and Ace sighed trying to gather his courage and entered the room. Hey Pops. He said sitting down in front of the man who was laying on his bed resting. What is troubling you my son? He asked and Ace closed his eyes before saying what had always been bothering him. I, I am the son of Gold Roger. He said and awaited the angry comments and hatred that had always followed him once people found out who his father was. Instead of anger what Ace got was a sound of laughter from the old man. Is that all? And here I was thinking it was a bigger problem. Pops laughed as Ace's face fell into shock. But you and Roger were enemies and rivals. You hated him. Ace said and Pops laughed some more. Roger and I were both pirates and on these seas he earned my respect. It does not matter who your father is you are a child of the sea and that makes you my son. Pop said and Ace felt tears come to his eyes. He had been accepted and loved. The old man who had known and fought against Roger had called him his family and given him his love, Ace had never been so happy in his entire life. Thank you. He whispered out hanging his head down and trying to regain his composure before a final thought came to his mind. Pops, does that offer still stand? He asked softly and Pops chuckled. If you wish for it. He said and Ace looked up at his father his eyes red rimmed and stinging but a small smile on his face. I accept. I wish to be the new second division commander. After that was said and the title announced everyone partied for the rest of the day and most of the second. Jinbi was happy to have come around this time not knowing there was going to be a party. Ace had never felt so light and was finally smiling freely to everyone and laughing as loud as possible. Sabo was happy, Ace was finally free of his chains and free to live in this world. Now all he had to do was change the minds of the people around him. Hopefully then Ace could smile like that forever and Luffy would never know the pains of rejection because of his birth. That night before the morning he would be leaving while Sabo was packing his room up with things to take with him. He couldn't help but stop and think back on how his life had changed so much because of this ship. Because of Garp pulling him and Ace away from Dodden he had met Luffy, had seen Ace grow, had partied, got hurt, learned it was okay to not be okay and had learned to smile from the bottom of his heart. Sabo couldn't stop the tears falling down his face as it all hit him, he was leaving for good. Having second thoughts. Ace asked leaning up against the door frame and Sabo shook his head. No, I'm going to go it's just that. This place here. I've never been so happy before. He said and Ace nodded. I know what you mean but Sabo, goodbye isn't forever. Sabo looked up at Ace who sat down on the man's bed allowing Luffy to enter the room with his bright smile. It's until we meet again. Luffy finished and Sabo turned around and pulled Luffy into a big hug. Why don't we spend the night together, one last time? Sabo asked and they laughed and nodded. We'll help you pack. Ace said and they did. That night the three brothers laughed and cried and played cards until 3 a.m. when Luffy finally fell asleep. I'm going to miss you guys. Sabo whispered brushing Luffy's dark hair out of his face. Then don't stay away for too long. Ace said lying down on Luffy's left while Sabo took the right and smiled happy. I'll try not to. He said closing his eyes falling asleep happy to be with his brothers even if it was the last time. When morning came Sabo was all packed and ready to leave, he was standing beside Jinbi and his family was surrounding him. You sure about this? Thatch asked him and Sabo nodded. Yeah. Sabo said simply and Thatch nodded his head accepting it. Keep in contact kid. 
was all he could say to the boy who left. I'll try my best. And he meant it. Ace, Luffy we promised that we'd live life without regrets and that's what I'm doing. No matter how far away I'll always be watching all right. He said and Luffy chuckled at his brother. Be the best. Ace said repeating himself from once before. Let's both be better, after all we've got a little brother we need to protect. Sabo said causing Luffy to scowl. I don't need to be protected. I'm strong. He yelled causing everyone to laugh. I'll see you around. He said waving before jumping onto a whale shark with Jinbi and they said goodbye moving off into the distance disappearing over the horizon. And just like that he's gone. Thatch said leaning on the railing watching the waves crash against the ship. I miss him already. Iza said sadly turning to look at Luffy and Ace who were both grinning in happiness. They don't look affected at all. Vista said pointing to the smiling boys. They are but I think they're happier that Sabo's following his dreams a little bit more than they miss him yo it. Marco said knowing just what Luffy was thinking. Luffy will be gone soon as well. Thatch reminded them all and Marco smiled softly. Then we'll have to train him harder no won't we yo it. And everyone grinned at the idea. Everything was going to be okay after all these were their little brothers and no matter where they went in this world they'd be loved. Two years later. Luffy was finished packing his backpack and was ready to go he was wearing a red vest buttoned up his front and blue jean shorts that went down past his knees. Oi Luffy. Ace called from the deck and Luffy smiled softly. Yeah, I'm coming. He called out to Ace as he walked to the desk he had in his room where his straw hat was sitting. Has it really been two years already? He asked picking his straw hat up and carrying it with him out of his old room onto the deck that had been filling up with siblings and his parents. You ready to go kid? Thatch asked sadly but a smile on his face. Yup. Luffy chirped a few of the crewmates in each division was ready to take Luffy through the comm belt to the island apparently his first mate was at. Ace had gotten in contact with Garp asking him for directions to the island where the dojo was supposed to be. Garp had given Ace the directions and the name of the said island and from there he passed it on to the navigation division to get Luffy there when the time came. Are you sure you don't want one of us coming with you for a bit yo it? Marco asked again to Luffy who shook his head. I've got to do this on my own ma. He answered and Marco nodded his head in understanding. Wherever you go my name will always protect you should you need it my son. Pop said to Luffy who smiled at his father. I want to make a name for myself first Pops before others figure out who I am. He said and Pops nodded his head in understanding. Luffy, I'll miss you yo it. Marco said giving the boy no man a hug which Luffy returned. I'll miss you more. He said as he did two years ago to his mother figure. That will never be possible yo it. He countered and Luffy laughed. Ace, I'm going to surpass you. He challenged and Ace laughed loudly. Bring it little brother. He challenged and the two fist bumped before Luffy jumped from the railing of the Moby Dick onto a smaller ship to take him where he needed to go. Luffy grinned before placing his straw hat on top of his head with pride. Sabo was first, Ace was second but I won't lose to you both. So wait for me at the top Ace. I'll catch up to you soon. He said and Ace chuckled but didn't say anything. All right I'm going now. He said waving to his family who smiled softly at Luffy their little brother and waved him goodbye with a loud shout that rang across the ship and waves all together. Marco was smiling for his Luffy since he was now following his dreams. As the further Luffy got from him the more it sunk in that Luffy was gone from his sight and wouldn't return so easily. It's hard to believe that after 17 years he's gone. Thatch said closing his eyes and remembering the smiling baby that was too happy for his own good. Remember when he first learned to walk how he's dragged his foot behind him. Izu asked recalling the funny way Luffy was. And how he rolled under Pop's chair for a few hours looking for you Marco. Marco laughed recalling the time knowing that was the very last time he ever really let Luffy out of his sight if he could manage it. Remember when he started to call you a cranky bastard? Or how he could make us all smile just by laughing. 
a few people joined into the reminiscing. Remember when I taught him where his eyes, ears, and nose were? Harada asked remembering the happy baby that wanted his food more than he wanted to know where his nose was. And how his first words were ma and pa. Thatch asked and before everyone knew it many were crying. Are you okay Marco? Pops asked his eldest who smiled widely. Yes I'm fine. We'll meet again but this time, it will be at the top of it. He said excited because he knew that if anyone was going to be the king, it was going to be Luffy. You sure? Ace asked him seriously since he himself was missing the boy already. Of course after all, this is only the beginning of the future Pirate King. His journey has just begun yo it. Chapter 63, Epilogue Marco was wandering the ship realizing how silent it actually was now. Sabo had gone his own way to follow his dreams and goodness he hoped they came true. Luffy was out on his own now causing trouble or at least Thatch hopped so. Though knowing the kid he was getting into as much of that as possible. Marco could only hope he at least waited until he had his Nakama gathered. Ace had accepted the position of second division commander and it really fit him almost as if he was born for the title and you never know, maybe he was born for it. Marco had been walking the ship for a while and found himself standing in front of the old room Luffy had been living in since he was able to be on his own. Marco had been avoiding this part of the ship for a week not able to take the actual pain knowing that this room would from now on be empty without his sunshine. Taking the door handle he opened the cabin up realizing it was dark and cold almost as if the presence of Luffy had faded completely. Has it really been a week yo it? Marco asked out loud knowing he wasn't going to be getting an answer. Marco walked around the room and check out the dresser and knowing it was partially empty. Luffy always did struggle to change his clothing on a daily basis so he only brought with him the bare minimum. Marco hoped that one of his Nakama would teach him some good habits over time. Marco sat on the bed and looked at where Luffy used to sleep. He remembered the days he would read the boy bedtime stories here and the laughter Luffy would give after a funny tale. He saw the old bear on the desk and remembered how Luffy would refuse to even live without that bear. They never did find the original toy he lost and guessed it had fallen into the sea. Looking at the bear closely Marco realized something was underneath of it. Marco was interested he gives that, especially since Luffy wasn't the best writer. Hey Ma! You finally decided to come visit my room did ya? I know this must be hard on you, the letter started and Marco sat down on the bed to fully take it in, Luffy had written him a letter. I don't really like saying goodbye to people because I swear we'll meet again. I especially hated saying goodbye to you and Pops and everyone else. I'm not going to be back for a long time Ma, and we probably won't talk as much either so I left you something. Marco read that last part in confusion before looking around the room since the letter just finished right there. Standing up and touching things in the room Marco opened one of the drawers in the dresser to find a large bound book. Picking it up Marco went and sat back down on the bed curious as to what this was. Unclipping it he opened the cover to find another folded piece of paper so he opened it up and continued to read. Yay, you found the present. It didn't take you too long did it? I knew I was leaving soon so for the past month I was gathering stuff for this. This book has all the pictures that were ever taken of me and of us together. I had Thatch help me find everything and then Izu made the book. Haruda helped me out all the pictures in and even made sure to leave extra room in the back for more. Someday I'll have a bounty that will rival Ace's and then yours maybe even Pops. I won't always be near but I'll never ever be too far either. Ah and Ma. Happy Mother's Day ER, I hope you found it that day. Luffy. Marco carefully put the letters aside and schemed through all of the pictures of a baby smiling, crying, and laughing. They had pictures of Luffy getting a bath and some when they tried to teach him to swim before he had his devil fruit. There were pictures of him and Shanks, and some of when he first met Ace and Sabo. Marco was fighting back tears at this wonderful gift he didn't hear Thatch enter the room. So you finally made it here. He said crossing his arms and leaning on the door frame a smile on his face. So this is the real reason you wanted to celebrate today yo it. 
Marco stated but a smile was replacing his sadness. I couldn't think of any other way to get you down here in time. You really worried us you know, we thought we'd have to drag you here ourselves. Thatch said laughing at the idea of dragging Marco across the ship and locking him in Luffy's old room. This is a wonderful gift you it. Marco said closing the book that was filled with many good memories. I think Sabo gave him the idea honestly but I have to agree. It's time we watch them from afar. Thatch said sitting down beside Marco on the bed. He'll be back in the new world soon you it. Marco said with confidence. I know and when he is we'll greet him home along with the people he is gathering. Tosh said to Marco who nodded. Friends of Luffy is family to us you it. Marco said holding the closed book close to his heart. But what if he finds a love interest out of the seas and brings her home to us? Thatch asked teasingly knowing he could ruffle up those phoenix feathers. Then I'll show her why I'm known as his mother you it. Thatch laughed, nothing had changed. Luffy could go to the ends of the sea, thousands of miles away with many new people but he's always have those sharp, lazy eyes watching over his back. Let's go show Pops. Thatch said standing up and letting Marco follow him as he looked back at the room and smiled. This had been an amazing gift from an amazing son and now it was time for the journey of the king to begin. I can't wait to it. Marco said smiling and closing the door and he really couldn't.